Hello everybody and welcome back and if you're brand new here welcome my name is Sue and I love to talk all things indie and cozy gaming. Today though I want to talk about something a little different not necessarily games but I want to discuss PC gaming for beginners. I got the idea just from seeing people on discord asking about what they should get for their first PC that they want to get into PC gaming but they're feeling a little overwhelmed so I'm just going to give a little bare bones introductory little explanation about PC PC gaming. I'm going to start off today by just kind of going over the reasons why PC gaming is becoming more popular, like why you would rather game on a PC rather than a Switch or a console. The first pro that I have on my list is kind of the most obvious. It's about the performance of a gaming PC. You are going to get much better graphics and gameplay, less dropped frames and things like that when you game on a PC. And I do know that other consoles like the Xbox and the PlayStation definitely do not have some of the problems that the Switch has, but the Switch is definitely a very low performing console between the three of them. And we can see that all the time with our Animal Crossing islands, how they get very leggy and a recent game that just came out Mineko's Night Market getting great reviews for Steam not so great reviews for the Switch and that is why. So the biggest reason why PC gaming is popular is because of the performance. Another great reason to buy a PC is that the games come out more quickly on PC than they do on consoles. For each game usually you get a PC release and then it comes to consoles later and a lot of times Switch you're waiting a very long time. We see this right now with Pay it is on PC, but you are going to have to wait quite a long time before it comes to Nintendo Switch. Another great thing about PC gaming is that you can mod your games. I know that there is some modding on the Switch, but it is very difficult, and I'm pretty sure that you can only use certain models of the Switch to be able to actually mod it. It is a lot more difficult, and you can actually brick your Switch, which is very unfortunate. Also, it is against Nintendo's terms and conditions. With PC gaming, however, it is so easy to mod your games, and it is actually actually acceptable within the gaming community. Most games have their code open source, which means that people can actually go in and modify the code. And it is awesome and really easy to do. You can do all kinds of things with modding from changing the way the game looks to changing how the game performs to even changing different mechanics within the game. Another great reason for PC gaming, and this one is becoming much more popular nowadays, it's emulation. Right now, a lot of the gaming consoles are going to digital digital only and obviously PC as well. And one of the things that happens with digital only games is preservation is lost. You can no longer play your games 20 or 25 years from now. It will be much more difficult without having a physical game. And a lot of people are upset about that. So they have been making emulators and you can emulate games from any generation of console and PC. You can emulate old games, newer games. Honestly, the sky's the limit with that one. So now that I've gone over some of the pros to PC gaming, I am going to talk about the cons because there are a few. And the most glaring reason why you might not want to be a PC gamer is the cost. The upfront cost for PC gaming is actually quite high, especially if you want to get a computer that performs really well and you can play all kinds of types of games on it. It is going to cost you a lot of money, unfortunately. And if you get into the world of content creation, it actually gets even more expensive. One pro to that though is that the upfront money is a lot, but you will have your gaming PC for many years to come and you can slowly upgrade and switch out parts to expand its longevity. The other glaring reason why PC gaming might not be for you is portability. PC gaming, not really that portable. Uh, yeah, I used to do it back in the day when we would have LAN parties, and yes, that is how old I am. <laughs> Traveling with your PC is very cumbersome and a little bit dangerous because you could easily drop your PC or it could fall or anything like that where you will end up breaking parts within it. Not to mention all the peripherals that you have to bring. If the place that you're bringing it doesn't have that stuff, you have to bring a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, all of that type of stuff. So portability is definitely a big con to PC gaming. And with with that note, you also have to have a very dedicated space to your gaming. You will have to find a spot in your house that has enough plugins. You can put a desk 
It needs to be a dedicated space, and a lot of times people don't have room for that. You know, with a console, you can just hook it up to your living room TV and you're good to go, but with a PC, there are so many things that you need to have on your desk that is going to take up a very big area within your house. And another con is the upkeep. You do need to upkeep your computer. You need to clean it out once in a while. You may need to replace or upgrade parts. And then there's the software side of things where you have to keep up with drivers and things like that, making sure everything is up to date. You know, virus software, if you want to have something like that as well. And some people just aren't really comfortable with that kind of stuff. So now that I've talked about some of the pros and cons, let me go over just a brief little explanation on how to know exactly what to buy for yourself. So in my opinion, I do believe that the one component of your computer that you should spend the most money on and the most time researching is your video card. There are two main brands to your video cards. We have AMD and we have Nvidia. I am an Nvidia person, but that does not mean that that's because it's better in any way. I think that they both have their pros and their cons if you really are worried about it and want to go do your research. I'm only an Nvidia person because my boyfriend in high school was and he helped me build one of my first PCs and because he was an Nvidia person, I just became one. It does not mean that they are better in any way. The next thing that I think that you should maybe spend a little more research on is your processor. Unless you are doing content creation or wanting to really multitask on your computer though, I honestly think that you don't have to spend too much time researching this one. And the two big brands for this one are Intel and AMD. I am an AMD person for the same reason that I'm an Nvidia person because my boyfriend in high school was and so my brain was very impressionable back then and I have just always been an AMD person since then. With the video card, this does not mean that it is actually better or worse. You can just kind of look up the two brands. I'm sure you can find all kinds of research online about the pros and the cons of each if you do want to spend a little more time researching that. The next thing is your memory or RAM. This is something that you really don't need to spend too much time researching. You'll just have to make sure that you get a memory card that fits with your motherboard, but we'll get into a little bit of that a little bit later. But I will tell you that RAM is the easiest way to upgrade your computer. You can just snap that right in and it is quite cheap as well. And you can actually have a huge boost in performance if your PC ends up not performing the way you want it to. That is your cheapest and easiest way to upgrade your computer. The next thing that you should think about is your hard drive and possibly having a first and a second hard drive. It's nice to have that stuff for backup and things like that. Or if you do need the extra space, games unfortunately take up a lot of room nowadays. And if you plan on using your computer for other things as well, especially if it comes to content creation, you're going to need a pretty big hard drive. I have a one terabyte hard drive and I also have a two terabyte hard drive. I'm pretty sure that's what I have on my computer. And there are times when I have videos that I'm editing as well as some games that I'm playing where my little bar is red warning me that I am actually running out of space on one of the hard drives. So I do recommend getting a very big hard drive and possibly getting a second one as well. The next part that I want to talk about today is how to actually go about buying your PC. There are three main ways to go about it. The first one is to order order all the components, have them sent to your house, and build it yourself. And I know that that probably sounds very overwhelming, but you can find a ton of YouTube videos showing you exactly how to put the computer together, and it is actually not as hard as you think it is. The second way to buy a computer is to customize it and have it built by somebody else. You can do this on websites like iBuyPower and StarForge, where you can actually pick a base computer in your price range, and you can switch out components as you go through it and then order it that way. And the third way to buy a computer is to just buy it outright off the shelf, whether it is from a website like iBuyPower or StarForge or one of the other tons of websites out there. Having said all this, I go with the second option. I like to customize my computer on iBuyPower.com and have it sent to me. I think that this is just the best one for me. I'm not completely confident with putting together the computer myself, unfortunately, so I just have somebody else do it for me. It's super slick. What I had done, it was two years ago, Black Friday, because they were having a huge sale. I picked out a computer that was actually for gaming and content creation. And then I went in and just changed out the parts as I saw fit. You know, I think I changed out my video card from an AMD to an Nvidia. I might have changed it from an Intel to an AMD for my processor. I think that I switched out my hard drives to get a little bit of a bigger one. And then at the end, you just purchase it. They mail it to you and they tell you every step along the way where they are. You will actually get text messages that says your computer is being built. Your computer is being 
being tested, your computer is getting ready for shipping, and it is so exciting when that computer actually shows up at your door. Having said all this, there is one way that I recommend to not buy your computer, and that is to walk into Best Buy, Walmart, or Target and buy it off the shelf. The reason why is because you are going to get a much lower quality computer for a lot more money. The best way to get your money's worth on your PC is definitely to go on a gaming PC website and either build it yourself, order the parts, or buy it right from them. And the last thing that I want to talk about is just optional accessories that you can buy. This is the most fun part about your computer is decorating it and making it your own. My favorite thing to buy is a mechanical keyboard where you can actually change the keys and customize it to everything that you want. If you are scared to PC game because you are thinking that you won't be very good on a keyboard, I hear you on that one because I am not great at keyboard gaming. You can actually buy gaming controllers that are meant for PC gaming so that you don't have to give up the ease of using a controller. This one is 8-bit do or 8-bit do. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. They actually make PC controllers that are specifically meant for gaming on a PC. They're just USB. You plug it right in and it connects to the USB and then you can charge it that way as well. But a lot of people don't know this. You can actually use Xbox controllers with PC because it's Microsoft. So if you don't want to spend the money on a PC controller itself, or if you already have an Xbox with controllers hanging around, you can just pick that up and hook it up to your PC and you can go that way as well. Then once you get into the world of content creation, you'll need things like microphones and cameras and lighting and things like that as well. But I'm guessing most people watching this are not into content creation. If you are though, and you want to see a video about PC gaming and buying a PC for content creation, let me know and I can do that as well. Well, we've made it to the end of my video today. I hope this helped you out a little bit for buying your first gaming PC. I know the first time that I built mine, I was very overwhelmed. I am on my second one that I've ordered from iBuyPower. I bought this one two years ago and I still have a lot of years left in this one because I will be able to upgrade things as I go. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you love seeing videos like this or cozy gaming videos or somebody awkwardly live streaming, then you should definitely consider subscribing because that's exactly what I do here. And I will see you guys in the next one.